Welcome! Today we are going to model this knife in ZBrush using various tools like the Taper and Soft Deformer, the Knife Tool, the Tex 3D and Vector Plugin, Booleans and Polygroup Framing. Before we start, I want to inform you about my free beginner hard surface course for ZBrush. In this course, I will guide you through the ZBrush UI and introduce you to the main tools we are going to use. We'll start with a warm-up exercise to practice the necessary workflows and then we'll dive right into creating a VR headset step by step. So if you're just starting out or want to have a more detailed explanation of my workflows, this course is perfect for you. You can access the course through the link in the description. So for the blade, I'm going to start with a polycube. Let's scale this to 2. And I'm going to scale this down, push it a little bit. So we have something like this. Maybe even thinner. Now let's activate symmetry as well as set symmetry. Actually, Y symmetry. And I'll go into my set model brush. Go into insert and single edge loop. I'll press to delete an edge and let's delete these two and also put supporting edge loops around this middle corner as well as here and now I'm going to delete these top edges so now we are already getting the profile of our blade so now I'm also going to delete these switch to multiple edge loops and now I think this looks fine. Let's go into the gizmo again. Go to the gear icon and go to taper. Now we can taper the tip as well as change the fall off. Something like this looks nice, I think. Maybe even a bit pointier. Okay, let's create a new folder for our blade. And let's duplicate the blade. Go to Polycube again. Scale this down and move to the side. And with this cube, let's mirror and weld that. I want to clip away the edges from the blade. Don't forget to turn on live boolean. And let's turn off Y symmetry and move this outwards. So we have something like this. Okay, once we have that, we can go back to our blade. And once again, use taper. And now we can taper the back end, turn off the Y symmetry. And now we are getting this tapered effect. Okay, now that we are happy with that, let's say Boolean subdivision. Go into our knife curve brush. And cut away a piece like that with a nice curvature. Weld Y. Okay, so once we're happy with the overall shape, let's give this some nice Dynamesh resolution to soften up the edges. The reason I'm not going to use Bevel Pro in this case is it will struggle a lot with all of these edges that are going on. It is great for more easy setups, but in this case, where, where we have like very thin edges next to each other, it's much easier to, to use Dynamesh. So one thing about Dynamesh is the resolution is behaving differently depending on the scale of your object. In this case, my sub tool is size 2, which means it's maxed out in size. So in ZBrush, everything that is uh, in the unit of 2 will get the maximum resolution that is possible if we turn the Dynamesh resolution all the way to the top. So I'm going to try 280 for now. 
and see if this gives us enough resolution. And indeed it does. It's enough resolution to give us clean edges. Let's go one step back and let's say something like 1000. The 1000 is already a little bit too low. You see the edges are not really holding up. So this is kind of the indicator that I'm looking for. So let's go to something like 2000. Yeah. And now I will activate symmetry again with uh, Y symmetry. And I'm just using my smooth brush to kind of brush over the blade and soften up the edges. For the handle, I'm going to again duplicate the knife, go into Gizmo and select the cylinder. So we have something like that. That's maybe a little bit too big. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this once more and move it back. I'm going to switch to the C modeler to delete this edge, switch to the insert and multiple edge loops, and also activate alternate poly group. Let's put some edge loops in here so we have something like this. We are later going to use the poly groups to use it in conjunction with frame mesh, but you will see in a second. Let's also go to the order edges, switch to crease and edge loop complete. And now I can hit dynamic with a smooth subdivision of, let's say, four. Let's go into our gizmo once more, go to deformer soft. Let's change the resolution here. So we have one more in the middle. Unmask the other points and let's scale this up. Let's also scale this slightly from the top, squish it a little bit. So now let's create uh, some nice ridges. I'm going to hit frame mesh with polygroups turned on. You can find that under stroke, curve and frame mesh. And there you have all these different options. And now I'm going to switch to my curved tube brush and click, invert the mask by control clicking in the canvas and let's split mask and let's get rid of those rings right here, delete hidden, I'm going to move this down in my list as well as the knife and turn on subtract. So if these rings are a little bit too thick, we can still go into our deflate with a negative value and shrink them down. So we have something like that. I think that looks nice. And let's go back to our grip and give this some noise. And let's fill this with the dark. Let's switch to this piece right here. Let's also squish it a little bit just so it fits the overall shape. Turn off live boolean for now. Go into the similar brush. Go to bevel. Let's bevel this up. Mask this portion. Invert the mask and scale it up. And move it back. So we have something like this. Go to the insert. Hold on Alt to paint in a new polygroup and Q-mesh that in and add new poly loops to support the edges. and activate dynamic.
All right. Let's create the last piece. Switch back to our blade. Now I'm going to duplicate the blade and move it to the bottom of my sub tool list. And I'm going to switch to my knife curve brush. And cut away a small portion of this blade. And now I got a new poly group which I can grab and delete the rest. And let's make a zero mesh by half. Deactivate symmetry, scale this up. Activate dynamic thickness. Hit apply. And once we are happy with that, I'm going to hit crease polygroups. Give this some subdivision so we get a smooth mesh like so. Let's hit apply, delete lower. And now I'm once again using my knife curve to give this some curvature. Weld Y. Now I'm going to redynamish that. some smoothing. Let's also adjust the grip to fit this piece right here. For that I will yet again append another cube. Mirror and fold. Without local symmetry, of course. Let's turn on subtraction and turn on live boolean. Let's move them in with a symmetry. And let's rotate them outward. So we are getting an effect like so. Let's move them up before our grip piece. Something like that, and let's also scale up this part right here. Alright, I think that looks cool. Let's bring this a little bit closer to the handle, and let's add some cool text. For that, we are going to use RC plugins, go to the text 3D and vector shapes, and let's hit new text. Let's call this um, Cool Knife Bro Corporation. Hit enter. Let's mask this portion, invert the mask, and move it below here, something like that. Rotate it by 90 degrees by holding down shift. Get it down. Give it some more thickness. and activate subtract and put it beneath our blade. Now we have a super cool knife. So if you want more insights of my workflows or want to get a better understanding of ZBrush, look at my free beginner hard surface course, which I designed to be easy to follow as a beginner. You can find the link in the description. Until then guys, take care.